we've been completely, completely abandoned by those we usually regard as friends in the international system. What relationship Nigeria has with them is one that Nigerians ought to try to understand. It has nothing to do with which government is in power. The truth is that the rest of the world has, has reached the point where they really think that if we can be drowned out, we should be drowned out. I give you one way of looking at it. We are relying on people who required us to sign agreements that keep us where we have always been. The Europeans may have colonized us. They assume we still are like colonies. The European Union is expecting Nigeria to sign economic partnership agreements. We simply say we are manufacturers. We are going to give you money to buy. We are going to lend you money to continue buying from us. Now, that is where we are. It is the kind of position that we were in under colonialism. Any Nigerian head of state who resists that position will be in trouble, would always be treated like somebody in trouble. Good luck refused to sign. Nigerians do not know or do not care that he did so. But the punishment that good luck had to take for not signing that agreement is one that was not for good luck, but for Nigeria as a country. Because we are measuring fifty-five. We are measured. We are measuring fifty-five years from independence, and in the 50, in that fifty-fifth year, we are told that unless we sign an economic partnership agreement with Europe, we will be in trouble. Add the one that everybody seems to talk about, that. Nigeria needed to be dealt with because, because we refused to sign a gay rights law. That is the one that everybody talks about, but not the, not the one that preceded it. Nigeria is very friendly with countries that say, we would not help you build a refinery unless we first establish it in our country, dismantle it, and then replant it in your country, which means that we will pay three times for a refinery that should be much, much less. If Nigeria could build its own refinery, that won't arise. But our security forces are destroying all the ramshackle refineries across the Niger Delta. Now, it doesn't show, it doesn't show a sense of independence when a good that could save your country from 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 penury is one that your own local citizens are not allowed to build. I am not saying that we haven't done things in 55 years, but I am saying that in terms of form, we haven't moved very far. Oh, we, do, we must not forget that when the colonizers came, the very year they came, they started building a railway from Nigeria, I, I mean from the south and from the north. We are governing ourselves. And in the 55th year, good luck was, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan was afraid to tell his countrymen that he was building a proper, uh, a, 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 a proper railway line from Kaduna to Abuja. It had to be hidden because it was being built by 
another foreign power who was not liked by our usual friends. So Nigerians were not told until Buhari, Buhari came to power that we had finished building a railway line and that that railway line and, and that the rolling stock on it had been paid for. Very many people voted in that last election. Up to today, if you told them that that had been done, they would tell you it didn't happen. Many Nigerians do not know or did not know until after the election that the Cubans were helping Nigeria to build a factory to wipe out, to wipe mal wipe out malaria. The European Union wanted Nigeria to depend on the old ways of fighting, of fighting malaria, insecticides and, and mosquito nets. But the Cubans had wiped out mos mosquito in, in, in parts of the world by simply, by, by simply spraying an area such that mosquitoes that lay eggs have their eggs drown rather than rather than wait for the mosquitoes to to leave bite before we start fighting that is to say the purpose the purpose of the factory was to make sure that we have a spray that if mosquitoes laid egg in eggs in an area the eggs will drown and therefore a generation of mosquitoes will die and not repeat repeat the uh, repeat the feats so of survival you, you seem to be suggesting now that Nigeria, despite being pronounced independent since 55 years ago, is still not independent with the European I'm, Union. I'm saying that the relationship between Nigeria and the West is still very close to that of the colonized and the colonizer. And that, and that we do need to be careful to read carefully what it is we are celebrating. It is good to celebrate the fact that for five years after, we are we are still surviving as a country but that that relationship still exists in almost the same way we have not in terms of the form of the relationship we have not moved very far so you you spoke highly of president Gulog jonathan refusing to sign certain bills so as not to make nigeria relapse into being uh, properly colonized by the Europeans. Uh, if you would audit President Gulag Jonathan's and, administration, and, and would you be praising him or would you be criticizing him? I actually enjoy praising President Gulag Jonathan because Nigerians refused to see how their country was moving. And one of the greatest borders of my life is not wanting to take decisions based on ignorance. Many Nigerians who responded to Good Luck Jonathan's ad administration responded to elements that are not at the heart of the development process. They responded to his body language more than they responded to even the things he, he actually did. I mean, the reason I actually I use the example of the railway, the, the malaria, the malaria and the uh, the, 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 the malaria factory and the European Union insistence on an economic partnership agreement that will literally drown us out in 55 years after independence. The reason to worry about it is that there are too many things that happened under Good Lord Jonathan's regime which we happen under every Nigerian government. I'm happy that Buhari has gone on saying we will not devalue our currency. Those are the kind of, 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 uh, of, uh, of things that Europeans wanted for good luck, Jonathan. If you think it will not happen to President Buhari, because President Buhari keeps saying that they are our friends, then we are, we are on, on, on a stream of self-deceit. Because the Europeans are in trouble economically. And if you think that they are going to stop wanting to, to, to pursue the exploitative relationships they have always had with us, we are wasting our time. We must not allow ourselves 
to, to think that it was because good luck Jonathan was such a bad president that the West were insisting on what they did. No. The truth is the relationship the West has sought to maintain with Nigeria is one that is insistently of the relationship between the colonized and the colonizer. One of the ways in which Nigerians lost it was applying a partisan rule to the examination of ways of government. Once you said good luck was clueless, you were supposed to be a very enlightened Nigerian who knew how to make a government develop a clue. We were all behaving like kids, using a partisan rule to measure, the, to measure your future. It wasn't just about good luck. It was about how Nigeria was not being governed at all. What, uh, what uh, uh, President Buhari has done is a strict measure that can go in the opposite direction, which is to say you destroy what you want to save by applying an austerity rule that is cutting to the bone. Look, we just had an independence celebration in which we spent only millions instead of the multiple billions that used to be, that used to be spent. It, it is certainly the kind of thing I expected that Mohammed, uh, uh, President Buhari could do. Seriously, that is not where my quarrel with, Buhari, with, with uh, Buhari's administration or Buhari's expected administration, you know, uh, uh, lies. But you see, I am interested not just in saving in, in the money that is saved or in the corruption that is fought. I'm interested in the wholesomeness in which relationships within Nigeria is kept. And when I say that, I mean it in terms of for a government that wants to fight corruption and create security and ensure that good governance has a meaning, there are certain, there are certain inalienable approaches that must, that must be considered. Buhari's, Buhari's current way of looking at Nigeria still has the mark of the old style north-south divide, which in my view is the very creator of corruption and insecurity in Nigeria. You cannot run a country on the basis of multiple moralities and expect not to have corruption. Corruption is not created by people from outer space. It's created by Nigerians. Multiple moralities mean that if you apply one rule to one set of people and another rule to another, they will develop relationships that are inconsistent with morality. They apply a, a good rule to the other and, I mean, that is, they apply a benign rule to themselves and a pernicious one to others. That is the basis of the corruption in Nigeria. The fact that the north-south divide has been a very potent destroyer of common morality. So when the world is threatening, strengthening the north-south divide, is that your at the moment? Idea? At the moment, he has not managed to deviate from it in a in a manner that is visible, because much of what he has said along those lines is is one that says rather than let the bureaucracy be transformed in a way bureaucracies are supposed to be transformed as watertight disinfectants, ensuring that corruption does not intervene. We are looking at the individuals. No!